Hello, today I would like to talk a little bit about strategy pattern and why it can why it can be quite useful in context of adaptive card extensions. Before we move forward, two words about myself. So here, here we go, Martin, myself, I'm SharePoint developer. I've been told I can go too much into the details. So or if you would need any assistance, help, guidance, uh, explanations on what will happen today or previously, don't hesitate to contact me at any of my lovely socials. Now let's discuss what can be the problem, especially with complex adaptive card extensions where you have multiple, multiple actions you want to execute uh, in the quick view. The on action method can, can grow and grow and grow to absolutely unmanageable manageable state. The more ifs or switch statement, statements you have, it gets more and more difficult to actually follow the code, to debug and to extend it uh, a little bit later, should you need to uh, extend your adaptive card even further. And finally, logic that uh, residues in SharePoint, SharePoint framework and SharePoint classes is difficult to isolate and test. What I mean by that? If you want to unit test something that is happening either in quick view, in the actual web part, in extension entry point, you will have quite a hard time, quite it will be quite difficult to, to properly mock the whole life cycle, deal with that. So the best thing you can do is you can forget about uh, testing the entry points, just test everything else. And with this, you will be able to test how your code integrates or interacts with user without actually needing anything to know about the quick view. How to do it? As I mentioned, strategy pattern. Strategy pattern is something very, very beautiful. It's, it is one of the cornerstone, the cornerstones, I believe, of design patterns in general, originally described by Gang of Four. What it is, strategy pattern, the pattern effectively tells us we will perform some action and this is exactly what we can use both in adaptive card extensions, but also in list view extensions uh, and in application extensions when we want to handle specific actions from one entry point. And usually we tend to do that using if action ID equals something, we don't have to do it like this. And finally, you can compose different action executors under one uh, action executor and in that action uh, executor decide what will happen? I know it's quite difficult to follow now, but this is why we are about to hit demo time. In demo time, I will first of all show you my beautiful adaptive card. This adaptive card, uh, as you can see on the first glance, does nothing, but when you click uh, quick view, you can see it loads in news or the recent news. I believe there are six or something like that. Now some news. Now we can interact through, uh, with that adaptive card. We can like post, we can add comment, boom comment added. Uh, we can share it in Teams and we can of course navigate between the different news. If you want to share in Teams, it's not a, a simple action because firstly we need to load available Teams. We have to select the team. Let's say we'll post that news in IT. Then we have to select in what the channel in general and finally share it. I hope that will work. IT general. Here we go. We share the, we share the news. But as you may uh, imagine, the code uh, code behind the whole if statements can get uh, quite difficult to follow. Uh, Actually, to give you some context how it originally looked like. That's it. We have on action and you can see action ID, action ID, if action ID, if action ID, quite a lot of different action IDs. So the goal is to minimize this as much as possible. First, or before we go further, let's take a look at the actual adaptive card templates when or the quick view template when you can see that yes we have quite a lot of actions there so how to handle it this i like this looks like something i can manage what is happening here we have our view manager and in our view manager we handle action we handle action by our action executor what is our action executor 
F12 again. So our actual executor actually combines few other actions we, we want to handle. Then in for each checks if specific action should be handled and if so, handles it. Let's go a little bit deeper and consider navigation action. So this is what will happen when we click previous or next. And action, exactly. As you can see, the should handle action will return true only if the action ID is next or previous. This is exactly what we have in our template under previous and next. One more time. And how will we communicate with actual adaptive card to say that, okay, we want to change state? As you can see here, in handle action, we also provide the quick view, quick, view quick view reference. Thanks to that, we can actually check what is the current state, so we can decide what will be the next index to, of news to display, and we can set the state. With that, we are good to go here. You can also see that we are loading comments because if there is some comment on the news, we also want to display, and then again, we update the state. And this is exactly what is happening for every other action I had there. The post in Teams action is a little bit different because as I mentioned before, post in Teams actually requires you to perform a few, uh, few uh, changes in the uh, adaptive card state. First one is to be able to select the team, then based on selected team, select channel, based on selected channel, then you can uh, post the, uh, the news. And this is exactly what is happening here. You have a nice isolation of what we want to do, how we want to do it, and I, at least I believe it looks a little bit cleaner. And now for the final step, as I mentioned, if you don't know me yet from this side, I'm a sucker for unit testing. And with that, we can actually unit test all of our actions without ever interacting with Big View itself. So that's it. I believe we went through that relatively quickly. I believe there is one last slide after demo time, which is, why do I like it? As I mentioned, easy way to add new actions uh, with zero impact on Quick View code. Why I consider it important, uh, the bigger adaptive card is, the bigger the template is, and the more difficult it will become to actually change something in Quick View itself. With that approach, if you have a new action, you just add a new action uh, to the template, and you actually, maybe I'll show that, and you register, or implement new action like this. Yes, we will have send news in email action handler. We added just here with absolutely zero impact on our uh, quick view itself, which I believe is a little bit safer. Next, easily isolated and testable without any need of mocking SharePoint dependency. I believe we covered that and handlers uh, related to specific business actions, so domain action, like again, pagination and sharing can be logically grouped together under one action handler. And I believe that's it. Unless there are any, uh, any more questions, I would like to thank you very much for the opportunity to be the last speaker. It was lovely. And thank you very awesome much. Awesome stuff. Thank you, Marcin, for that.